What's up, you guys? Sean Ross Sapp. This is Fightful. It is January 18th, 2023. Please leave a thumbs up on this video. Subscribe, tap the bell for notifications, all that good stuff. If you want your questions or statements right on the air, Super Chats and Humper Chats are the way to do it. We'll tell you more about that in a little bit. We're here to review AEW Dynamite. Uh, and, of course, we're going to talk about the unfortunate loss of Jay Briscoe. Uh, we covered this extensively on the list in your boy today, so I encourage you guys to check that out as well. Uh, we're likely going to talk a little bit more about that on the first ever Fightful Awards. It was, they were slated to take place on uh, January 12th. They are now happening Thursday, January 19th. And uh, I mentioned this last night on the air. Uh, we've got an award with Jay Briscoe's name on it in route right now. They won a tag team match of the year uh, a month ago, which I mean, go, goes to show you how, how relevant, how recently he was, he was doing incredible things. Uh, I also see Alex doing some things over there on the other end of the stream. <laughs> are, are, are your headphones hooked up, Alex? My, uh, the, the, the Bluetooth and my Bluetooth headphones died right now. So oh, I, had to, no. I had to find, fish out my old ones that plug into the actual thing to the 3.5 millimeter jack. I'm that's, here now, and now I can hear you. That's why I don't use them, because I've got this fear of that always <laughs> happening. So that's why I always have the cords. Although I, I like le legitimately tomorrow, I was thinking about buying a pair of, of Bluetooth They're really headphones. nice. I just, I just haven't charged them in like two weeks. So that's my fault. Yeah. Uh, they Now, I, off the top, I, I feel like it's important for me to uh, say this. Yeah. I was told uh, you know, when, when people saw this show, you know, there are a lot of people that expected a 10 bell salute, any, any number of those things. I wish that would have happened. I wish that could have happened. I wish there could have been more very blatant Jay Briscoe tributes. Um, I, specifically i want to i want to say verbatim what i was told because i don't want to take anything out of context uh it says i hope everyone knows tony is doing the best he can for jay and that was about 35 40 minutes into the show uh, i don't know what that necessarily means but what we do know is a, a report that fightful select had less than a year ago is that warner brothers discovery did not want the briscoes on their show speculated because of the, the tweets, which by all intents and purposes, seems like he genuinely regretted yeah. and not only said that he regretted, but explained specifically why he said those things, why it was wrong. And um, uh, tons of wrestlers. I mentioned Effie dark Sheik, that, that are members of those, that those communities that, that were targeted talked about how wonderful he was to them. So um, I, I just feel like that's important for me to mention. We did get several tributes on this show in the form of armbands and a graphic. And Tony Khan said that they are filming a tribute show that will air on Honor Club for free uh, after the episode of Dynamite that aired. But I'm going to try to find out more about this. But... Um, I wish they could have done more. I don't know if they were able to. And I know people say, well, why? Oh, like this person saying it reflects poorly on them. I agree. If so, if, yeah. And and they they mentioned him several times. Um, I, I wish, you know, it could have been a video package. It could have been something just a little bit more. And you know what? Maybe that happens. Maybe that happens next week. Maybe that happens down the line. I just... Uh, I know there's a lot of people hurting there right now. I mean, I there were several people in AEW that were supposed to do like uh, awards acceptances today. And I emailed my contact in AEW and I said, hey, I realized that is not something that they're going to be keen on doing today. Let's just nix that. Let's scrap that. And um, they were very understanding of, of us working together in that sense. But um, this it it's a tragedy. and. Um, Unfortunately, we're in the position to even talk about like how a person should be honored or, or given a tribute because we don't get him anymore, who I consider the greatest ROH star ever. 20 years, 
the top of singles tag, six man tag divisions. He was a special special performer, Alex. Um, yeah, I I it was one of those things where uh when the reports came out that he was 38, uh just shy of his 39th birthday. Um I I mean, it wasn't like one of those things like, well, he looked older, <laughs> but it just, it was the, there's, it didn't make sense that a guy who'd been doing it for as long as he had could only be 38. Yeah. Um, considering, you know, you have all these guys who work well into their forties now. Um, it, it just, it didn't make sense to me that he was only that young. Uh, so the fact that he, like he and his brother were having matches against each other in CZW, when they were a combined age of like 35. Yes. Like, like, which is a wrestler's <laughs> prime now. That's when they are starting to hit their prime right now. I know it, it's, it's, uh, it is a, um, uh, a terrible, senseless tragedy, uh, in every sense of the word. Um, and, and a lot, a lot of it for me, because it's my own, it's my own personal, um, uh, feelings on death, just the idea of that it can be taken away from you like that. Not after some long illness where we're, 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 we're not that that's any better, but it's just a different feel. I've had people taken from me in different ways, but the ones that were here one minute and gone the next are always the ones that, that hit me the hardest uh, be, because, because I never had a chance to say goodbye type of things. And, and so in this way, that, really really um hit home for me just just when those when that news came in yeah so uh we don't know specifically what was permitted what nope. wasn't if if that was even a conversation we don't know nope. I, I will say this if if mm -hmm. and this is a big if if warner brothers discovery limited what they could do yeah as the lead in for a fucking slap show with yeah, a guy know, who was on film slapping his wife. Just saying. Yeah. That, that, that would be a big problem for me. I also expect at Supercard of Honor, I would imagine they're going to do something. I, I would imagine they're going to honor course. him. I mean, again, the greatest performer in mm -hmm. totality in ROH history. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Ricardo says, redemption for Jay means redemption for me too. And Drew Douglas, good friend of the show, says it's been a rough week. Just goes to show how short life is. Thanks for giving fans a form to share stories. I appreciate you guys for everything you do. We appreciate you, Drew. Uh, good friend of mine. But uh, Jam Beard says, Jay was a guy who affected so many companies. GCW, ROH, Warrior, Defy, AEW, Impact, Mission, New Japan. Missing a few. And even though he never worked WWE, so many people there have wrestled him. There was a thing that Seth Rollins tweeted out. Where he said, if I didn't have those matches with Jay Briscoe, I don't think Tyler Black ever could have become yeah. Seth Rollins. You have you have Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn in the top program in the entire company. Kevin Steen and El Generico in their their, their matches versus the Briscoes. Like Kevin Steen lost the, the title to Jay Briscoe. Like they so many guys at the very top of uh, of all of wrestling, they cross paths. With with Jay Briscoe, even if even if Jay Briscoe never made it to the WWE, um, it's it is he he affected so many people uh, inside and outside of the wrestling business. Uh, it's a it's a it really is a senseless loss. And uh, also the the tribute show will be on ROH's YouTube as well. Mm -hmm. But an incredible loss, a fantastic performer, and of course we're going to continue to talk about him all throughout tonight. So. Uh, Feel free, share your memories, guys, by by all means. Orange Cassidy kicked off this episode of AEW Dynamite. By the way, guys, we had Dynamite plans on FightfulSelect.com. We have each of the last three weeks. And tomorrow, just like we do for Raw and SmackDown, we're going to have producer info, backstage info, a lot of stuff like that. So you get this for Raw, SmackDown, and AEW Dynamite as of right now. We'll see where it goes. Next week, John Alba will be joining the show as uh, AEW Dynamite is at Rupp Arena, about three miles from my house. So I'll be there for that. I'm going to be digging up scoops. Uh, my friends at Toy Vomit here in Lexington, Kentucky, are hosting Brody King and Ethan Page on Tuesday night. So 
you guys want to meet and greet, get get a signing done, and pick up some figures, head over to uh, Toy Vomit, Toy HQ in Lexington, Kentucky. Check them out. But Orange Cassidy beats Jay Lethal. And I loved Seahawks' tweet where he said, Jay Lethal's got to have a cousin on the Jaguars or something. <laughs> like, this guy is on TV every week. And listen, <laughs> do I think he's a good performer? Yes, I do. I absolutely do. Mm-hmm. But guess who I don't need to see every week on every TV? Week. Yep. Every week. Yep. Somehow he's doing something. Listen, Jeff Jarrett's been a very pleasant surprise mm-hmm. for AEW. Like yeah. he looks great. Uh the I've mentioned this before, but Christopher Daniels gave me some of the best wrestling advice ever. I said, How do you avoid botching? Because I've only seen him botch once. Mm-hmm. And he said, I never do anything in minute two that I can't also do in minute 30. Mm -hmm. And my reaction to that is Jeff Jarrett never did anything in 1988. He couldn't do in 2023. Mm -hmm. So he can do everything that he's always done. Yeah. But this was a fun match. I loved orange Cassidy just going full Harley race. Like Mm -hmm. what's your finish kid? (laughs) I'll move. That is great. I enjoyed the the sports entertainment shenanigans with this. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Dan Housen as the usher, yep. best friends around there. I'm ready to move on from Jay Lethal for a little yep. while. I, good performer, ready mm-hmm. to see somebody else in that spot. Orange mm-hmm. Cassidy gets the win. Yep. Um, it turns out that the cure all for my problems with Jay Lethal. Uh, uh, J- Jeff Jarrett, Satnam Singh, and Sanjay Dutt is Danhausen. If Danhausen is out there taking the piss out of all of their BS, uh, then then all of a sudden it becomes funny because da- everything Danhausen does is incredibly dumb and it works. Uh, and and I I loved uh, his his counteracting all their stuff. I I you know what. It's a it's a nonsensical thing. If Jeff Jarrett hits anybody with a guitar, Sanjay Dutt is fired. But it it works as a motivation thing. Sometimes in in um in early acting classes, you will have somebody do a scene and then do it a different way. We're like, okay, so this whole scene, you're never gonna bring it up, but this whole scene, you really have to pee. And the whole thing is completely different because you're playing this other thing, and you'll try really hard not to not to do it too much but the whole idea of it is the whole scene plays out the same way except Sanjay Dutt you cannot let Jeff Jarrett go anywhere near anybody with that guitar and the whole thing is added another layer of shenanigans that's very specific for a very specific reason and it totally worked I loved it yeah Force of Will says Alex ripping Mystery Science Theater 3000 with that shirt punch deadlift big McLarge huge punch rock roin you can rep uh, Fightful at shop.fightful.com. I'm going to add some updated stuff on there. I promise. 2022 was a little busy. I didn't get as much time to do- to, to uh, design shirts yeah. as I would like. And yeah. uh, so, uh, shockingly, 2023 has uh, also been crazy. So, yeah. Uh, Sawyer says a little more tribute would have been good, but at the end of the day, I think I needed two hours of crazy fun wrestling to lift my spirits. And I got a banger episode tonight. R.I.P. J. Yeah. Love to everyone. Considering the circumstances and and the limitations, I I would have liked a little like a tribute video, like a two minute video would have been nice. You know, I mean, I don't I don't know I don't know what harm a ten bell salute would have done. Yeah, like that to me felt like it was it because because I I, I tuned in a minute late and they were like the fireworks were going off and it was the yeah. it was the same opening as everything. I was like, did I miss the ten bell salute? I, it turns out I missed. The, the overlay card of R.I.P. J. Prisco, which, which yes. is great, but also the absolute bare minimum. Like mm-hmm. I, I thought a 10 bell salute would have would have would have started the night off in a, in a way everyone needed to have that moment to honor him. And then you can move on. Meet Normus says, what's good, everyone? Meet Normus loves you, whether you're a vegan or a power slap fan. <laughs> Two of my favorite Briscoe promos on YouTube are cosmetically pleasing and Dalton Castle. What kind of bird are you? Sad they never got on TV. They deserved it. I'll say this. Um, in addition to being a fantastic wrestler, mm-hmm. having a great look, I don't know if there are there was anybody for the last 10 years that said that they were going to kick somebody's ass, and I believed it more than Jay Briscoe. Yeah. Um, 
I believed every word of what he said. Mm -hmm. Pro Wrestling Podcast, who is sponsoring the Fightful Select or the Fightful Awards Thursday, January 19th, says it's your friendly neighborhood podcast just saying hi. Well, hello. We had Adam Cole, the look back there. Uh, Lord Zypher says, any news and creative plans for Cole? Really curious to see who he ends up wrestling at Revolution. That is a big question, Alex. Where are you thinking they're going with Adam Cole? Because no follow-up this week. Nope. How do you feel about that besides the video? I don't know, man. This week's all weird. You know what I mean? It like, is. I, I don't know. I don't know what, what if plans might have changed. Um, uh, but listen, um, Adam Cole is a, a huge star and you you figure out things for that guy to do i don't i don't know what they what they are specifically um the, the, i will say this show is largely what they had planned is what i was right. told yeah. yeah um then then i i guess i would have liked to have seen something else f from him live i mean that 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 kind of reaction that the crowd uh, he's one of those guys you have do something on the show every week just so you get that crowd pop and that thing that that reaction on television. Um, but I, I honestly don't know. I mean, like, there's there's listen, Revolution's going to have <laughs> eight matches on it right now that we have we that haven't actually the the, the program hasn't even started yet. Yeah. Um, so we'll we'll figure out something. But uh, I. I it, it, it like do do uh, it doesn't make a lot of sense right now to insert him into certain title programs. But all you got to sure. do is have have him come out, cut another promo, and have some guy come out and say, "Hey, I don't like you." And there you go. That's something we could do. Like, yeah. Have, have we have we done? It seems like probably he's got something else to do. Uh, any any storyline moving forward with Hangman Page? Have we done Moxley versus Adam Cole? Because. <laughs> Because that would be a hell of a match to put on just for the hell of it. Tom Lavalley says, I think OC after a 10 bell salute is too big of a tone shift. I mean, I wouldn't say that. He's not driving out there in a clown car and yeah. like throwing pies in people's faces or anything like that yeah. uh, or anything disrespectful. Uh, we did see a tribute in the form of the Bucks wearing uh, armbands and they put over top flight in an yeah, absolute friggin slapper alex yeah, it was man i still uh to this day i believe that nick jackson is gonna have like he's gonna have one like a, a one-off title match or something and it's gonna be amazing like that guy his kicks i can't i can't even possibly convey how tough it is to be as accurate and throw kicks the way that he does mm. for a guy that i I don't know if he ever had any martial arts right. experience, like none that I've I've known of. Yeah. But Top Flight gets the win here after just an amazing match. I can't remember the name of their their double team move that they do, the moonsault DDT type of thing, like the face melter or some shit like that. Sorry, I'm not a savant with with the names of moves, but just they do such incredible things, and this is not unlike the young bucks to put over young talent. Right now, I know what's going to happen. I know I'm going to get a message from somebody that says, well, it's funny that you were complaining about the Briscoes as champions losing. Well, hold on. These are the trios champions mm -hmm. losing two, one, two matches. Mm -hmm. They are not the two, one, two champions. No. My issue with the Usos losing was that they lost 11 times via pinfall, mm -hmm. not DQ count out anything no. separate. The two one two champions lost two one two matches yep. by pinfall eleven times since being champions. That's what I took issue with. So I've especially got no issue with the Bucks as trios champions losing here, especially with the story they told Alex. Yeah. Because the story they were telling on commentary was these guys just went through seven grueling matches mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. where they got hit by hammers. Yeah. Thought yeah. this was great. It was great. Um, it it is uh, it is a, a uh, you're right in that it is a two on two match and they're not the two on two champions. I I will rem I I remember though when they said okay, Young Bucks and Kenny, you're gone for a while. Let's we're gonna put the titles on on Death Triangle, and then Death Triangle proceeded to lose 
almost every match they had in combinations of singles, doubles, anything that wasn't a, a tri trio's title defense, they lost all those matches. And it felt, it just felt weird seeing people who came to the ring wearing a title lose. And it was like, no big deal. Sure. You know, so this, in this case, I'm all for it because remember there was a trios battle Royal thing that, um, that top flight and AR Fox won. Um, so they're like, if you say, okay, well, AR Fox come back and join us. Now we're going to get the next title shot. Like the, because we beat you two on two, we're adding our guy who we want to battle Royal with. You guys are the champions. You bring your guy, Kenny in here. Let's have top flight and AR Fox versus, uh, young bucks and Kenny and holy God, that match. Like I'm fine with it. If it's leading somewhere, they've also talked about how, um, top flight never beaten the bucks. Like there, there's this, this, there's a, there's a through line overall. And, and I think the top flight's going to be one of those teams where we look back in five, 10 years and go the match they had with the bucks with the bucks, put them over. That was a big thing for them. These are the kind of things that I'm okay with because it is it, it, in a grander service. But the, the, the booking has to be there and the performance has to be there. The growth has to be there from a promo perspective and all that. Because we were saying the same thing about Private Party, what, right. over three years ago? We were saying the same thing right. about Private Party. And if you would have told me that they weren't even sniffing the tag team titles in 2023, yeah. I'd be like, what, really? Mm -hmm. Now, granted, the roster looks way, 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 way different than, than it did then because the original method was – Oh, we're not taking anybody that WWE released. In fact, somebody had to have left the company of their own volition, so they got pushed back up quite a bit. Yeah, uh, incredible match, top flight. This was a much needed win because otherwise they're going to become the, you know the guys that just lose on Dynamite. Yeah, and and win on Dark. And I thought this was really really great. The Gun Club or the Guns, whatever the hell their name name is now, they're the Ass Boys, the Gun Club, the Guns. They're the Ass Boys. Yeah. Yeah, the butt cheek boys, butt cheek bros come out and say that they made the acclaim popular. The acclaim try to cut them off, but the butt cheek bros aren't having it until Max Caster just kind of forces his way through. Uh, this is, I, I think the guns are fantastic as performers at doing what you're supposed to do, get mm -hmm. under the skin and stuff. Mm -hmm. I just, if they are also going to be put in these spots, I would love to see them win their matches as well. Yep. Yeah. They got to start. They got to start. Um, they're, they're in a, they're in a spot now where they basically just annoyed FTR into getting a, a match versus FTR, which they then cheated to win. And now they're annoying the acclaimed into getting a title match. So like it, it is kind of a thing where I, I, I don't recall Somebody in the chat will absolutely know this or look it up for me. When the last time they won a tag match that wasn't this match over the over FTR, uh, that I would have seen. I mean, I'm sure they're winning matches on dark and elevation, which I'm not able to watch every week, but it feels weird that they're just oh, well, this, this is the team we got for them. Um, like hey, top flights on a win streak, top flight versus the acclaimed. We can do that. Can we do that? I didn't like that. Do you think there's a chance Billy turns on the acclaimed? I mean, this is the thing. They did that already, right? They did it, like, they kind of, he chose his sons over them, and then the sons backfired it on him, and, like, is, is it a kind of a thing where, where we're going to be doing that over and over again? Um, I think there is, but I, I do like, I got two words for you, family therapy. I thought that was funny. Yeah. I think there's a chance that he could end up, uh, end up turning. Because, I mean... I feel like scissor me daddy ass has peaked. Has probably yeah. peaked and they did yeah. what they should do. Hangman promo. Jambeard says, Hanger says he's going to mend fences. I think he means mend friendships with the elite after mm -hmm. suffering the injury. How are you thinking? How are you feeling about that? Um, it Hanger is such a great... He does all these really little subtle things as a, as a wrestling actor. Mm -hmm. Like there's because there that's a part of, of of the business is being able to actually, you know, be an actor. And he's he's got it. Like there's something about it, the way like the those the little hitch in his voice after Renee told him that Mo Moxley's words about like 
uh, he detests how much he respects you or kind of a thing. Like yeah. there's a, that's a really, really cool thing that he, like he wasn't expecting that and had to take some time to process it while giving an answer to a question. Like that was really great. Uh, I love him. Like, not being able to say it out loud that he's going to go and talk to the Bucks and Kenny and try and figure out what that's all about. Um, that moment of, hey, uh, Renee, when you see John, could you tell him, you know what, never mind. That's silly. That's stupid. Uh, I'm going to go. Like, what was it? But like, there's, he's always second guessing himself and the, uh, that, that the character is, he's always been. And so, uh, so now in this moment where there's a, 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 a perhaps a you knocked my ass out i knock your ass out um let's be friends thing that they could do with with moxley and hangman i mean jesus like that that would be a hell of a duo uh there's a lot of fun stuff they can do there's a lot of fun stuff you can do with your pubes thanks to manscaped.com and the code fightful alex that's manscaped.com and the code Fightful. Not just that, though. Lots of fun stuff in, in the bathroom in general. They got that ultra premium collection. That's the skin and hair care kit. They got the weed whacker, the electric nose hair trimmer. They got the beard hedger, which is a beard trimmer. And they've got the lawnmower 4.0. That's the groin and body grooming. Manscaped.com code Fightful gives you 20% off plus free shipping. And hey, if you want those traditional packages, they have everything from the Beard Hedger Pro Kit to the Perfect Package 4.0, the Performance Package, the Platinum Package, all kinds of stuff. Beard brushes, scissors, formulations, ball toners, trimmers, even special gifts, boxers even. They got refined cologne. What don't they have at Manscaped? Basically, if you use it in your bathroom to make yourself look better, manscaped.com has it. And we have it for 20% off plus free shipping with the code Fightful. Again, that new beard kit is fantastic. Comes with beard shampoo, beard conditioner, beard oil, a balm, a travel bag, an AC adapter, USB-C cable, and a beard hedger. I cannot tell you how important having that beard brush is as well. That comes with the free gift along with a beard comb and beard scissors. It's good stuff, my friends. Check it out. Manscaped.com and the code Fightful. There we go. You're a pro, Alex. Thank you. A true pro. Thank you. I'll have you know, though, uh, my back is dolphin smooth. Okay. Okay. Naturally. Dolphins everything else is smart. Dude. Everything else is a veritable forest, but the back. Reese Rose says I was homeless watching Kenny Omega return with bird on AW plus on a curb in Baltimore. Now my family's somewhat safe and I watched a five-star match on free TV. Mm -hmm. I love Jay wrestling saved my life. Well, I'm so glad to hear that you're doing better and in a position to where you can super chat us, man. I, I can't tell you. How fortunate that makes us feel. Yeah. So I'm glad that you're doing incredibly well. And we're very glad to have you as a viewer so much. And glad that wrestling's helping you. I mean, wrestling has helped a lot of us. So yeah. glad it's doing that for you. Knocked Bogan says, started late. Going to give them another week to see if they're allowed to do more. If not, then a discussion needs to be had about the network. Yeah, I want to find out more. Yeah. I, I want to find out some more. Mm -hmm. Well, we found out that... The NWO style attacks just don't work for Jericho Appreciation Society. Back to back weeks. And I love it because mm -hmm. last week we thought it was going to happen or the last time as well. Mm -hmm. Ricky Starks just fought through this one as well. Yep. This was a very sports entertainment match. Yes. With Jake Hager. He stole the hat and all that uh, from Jake Hager. And then he ended up beating a bunch of asses. Yeah. And beating Jake Hager. This was simple, effective. Ricky Stark should not be losing to anybody in this, except for maybe Jericho. And even mm -hmm. then, I, I want to see him beat Jericho. Right. How'd you feel about this? Because I, I thought it was pretty smart booking. Yeah, uh, it's it's what it, it would, what it needed to be. Uh, Ricky Stark's overcoming the odds, absolutely. Uh, Jake Hager, just you know, being Jake Hager wrestling like the guy who says, "I'm going to slap your face off your face." 
is the is the perfect thing for him. Like just a a, a wrecking ball. Um, yeah, no, this was this was this was very good. Ricky Starks is an absolute star moving forward. Um, uh, they're still the this, this dissension in the the ranks of JAS. Uh, is just it's it's a slow thing that's just going to play over the next I think three to four years. Um, are are we going to see some something that happens between Garcia and and Sammy coming out of everything this week? I'm 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 looking forward very much so to Action Andretti in the ring again after what we saw last time. Him versus Garcia on Friday should be great. Um, and then we'll see where we're going moving forward. Tracy Rose says, oh, yeah, smoke your weed and enjoy wrestling. Uh, my friend, I do. Uh, after this match, we got the, the Y2J Sammy and Garcia promo, and Garcia volunteered to be Jericho's partner. Sammy was great here. Yeah. <laughs> Sammy is like, I'm so proud of you. I've been training you for this. Mm-hmm. And he's like, also, I got you new gear, and it's leather pants. And he just yep. embraces Daniel Garcia, who doesn't change his expression. I thought this was phenomenal. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, Dan, Dan, I think Daniel Garcia should lose the match versus Action on Action Andretti because he's the pants are so uncomfortable. I think that I think because Daniel Garcia is not the type of guy to wrestle in leather pants, and I think him being forced to wear them uh, is a really is a really funny thing. Um, I, I I think this is great. The Sammy and and. And Daniel Garcia uh, pairing, they're very, they're absolute opposites, but are forcing themselves to be the same guy, uh, which is Jericho's surrogate son. Like it's, it's great. It's good stuff. Oh, you want to talk about good stuff? Brian Danielson beat Bandito. What a goddamn match this was. <sighs> I wish I could remember every individual spot in this match, but Bandito was a house of fire. That guy looked so thrilled to be in AEW. And he looked so thrilled to be in the ring with Brian Danielson. And while he's in the ring with Brian Danielson, the crowd is chanting, Bandito, Bandito. Mm-hmm. They loved him. He's yeah. got a special type of charisma that transcends language, yeah. that transcends uh, oh, him speaking Spanish. It transcends being able to see his face. Exactly. Like, we can't see if he's smiling or or like what he's doing. Like none of that. We we don't. We can't. See, we can't see him in anguish. He's if, if he's in a hold. He's got to do all of that with his body. Like it's he's he's and, really special. And I know that the common criticism will be on him. Slow down. Slow down. No, that is how we. I though him slowing down is his facial expression. Yeah. So when he's not going a hundred miles an hour because he can't show his facial expressions, you see him physically slow down, and you go, oh, okay, that's it. That, that's one of the, the first things that you're taught with like as people do learn how to work under a mask. He yeah. trains under the mask. I love that they mentioned that on commentary. Yeah. And I'll tell you what's great, Alex. You've got a guy in Excalibur who can relate to him in a manner in which no other commentator will be able to right. relate to him. Yeah. And will be able to offer insight that no other commentator will be able to. Yeah. Um, I think that that's so fantastic. So we've got. Two straight matches with Brian Danielson mm-hmm. against two, I, I want to say younger stars. Bandito is a former ROH world champion, but still, right. relatively speaking, on a global scale, Bandito is a younger star sure. that both lost to Brian Danielson and came out looking a million times better yeah. because that's this, that's what we do here. Sawyer says, with all due respect to the entire Best of Seven series, Danielson, Bandito, Best match of the year so far. Hump my socks off. More Bandito on TV, please. Uh, I think it might be the best Dynamite match, but uh, I've, I've still got Osprey and Omega over it. But mm-hmm. Dream Ninja says, Danielson must be having the time of his life wrestling Takeshita and Bandito back-to-back weeks. The Danielson Weekly Wrestling Clinic rules. Well, let's talk about it because that's what this was. Mm-hmm. It was an absolute humper i'm yeah. talking denim on den- denim dry humpage here mm-hmm. we got alex just amazing stuff yeah. out of these two it was um it was really special uh you, you've heard that um came out this week that that danielson was super excited to get to wrestle bandito um and and when danielson is excited to wrestle you um he uh he he gives a lot 
in the match. I mean, like he, he like the stuff that that um, when I say gives, I mean takes because some of the stuff he was taking from Bandito was kind of crazy, um, and and it was excellent, just back and forth. And they were they were trading counters to like submission moves, and the crowd was like, "This is awesome." These these guys are just very special. Uh, Brian Danielson, I I uh, I I firmly believe, especially with this run he's having AEW, will go down as the greatest to ever ever do it, and he's uh, going to make all the people he wrestles uh, look like they're on his level uh, because that's what he does. That's how great he is, and that's how great Bandito is. Bandito and Katesta, Katesta in uh, in two straight weeks. Um, this is, this is, this is basically Danielson's wrestling heaven. Can you, like this, the idea of only like a few short years ago, he was like, I'm never going to get to wrestle again. And now he's out there with these types of guys putting on these types of matches on weekly television. Like this is everything that he's wanted coming back. And I'm so happy for him. Uh, Bandito made this extra special with a lot of really great spots. Um, there, there were moments I was like, well, how did I believe that was the finish? Obviously, Bandito has to lose this match, or or Danielson can't have the title match. So we, but they sold me a ticket in the moment so hard I was like, Bandito's got that one. Yeah, but of course he can't. It's great. Uh, Tony says, "I will never turn down a Bandito match, but I need him to get some wins. I also don't want him to, ta- or I also do want him to tame tang team with Hangman. I almost called him Tang Man. Tang Man." <laughs> <laughs> Pootie Tang Man? That's when Hangman turns into a male stripper. <laughs> calls himself Tang Man. Yeah, there you go. Uh, so this is why I think it would be important for them to show. Give me, give me a one minute recap mm-hmm. of yeah. Dark and Elevation. Yeah. One minute, mm-hmm. and you would see. Oh, he beat Christopher Daniels. Mm-hmm. That would be very helpful. Yeah. Brandon Charles Powell says Bandito is so strong. Hopefully one day we get to see him versus Tyler Bate. Ain't going to happen anytime soon, buddy. Anytime soon, but yeah. Sawyer says, what do you think the chances are this weekly gauntlet for Danielson we get is him and Shibata? I wonder if MJF, like he would do MJF's bidding for him, you know, Shibata. Right, right. Like I I could imagine him like clocking MJF and being like, I'm doing this because I want to do it. Right, right. Not for your money. So we know we know next week is is Brian Cage. We'll talk about that segment, but there's two more after that. In order to get to February eighth, he's got to he's got to win one on February eighth. Uh, so there's two more after that. We don't know, and and honestly, there's a lot of really intriguing possibilities out there. So that is the match that we're getting next. By the way, uh, MJF cuts a promo, and Brent Lockman says MJF's nightly bloodlust has overflown into his days. He feels mm-hmm. lethal on the verge of frenzy. He thinks his mask of sanity is about to slip. This is what I keep mentioning. When MJF doesn't like you, he will hit you with LOL, your mom. Mm-hmm. When he hates you, it is mm-hmm. your father left your mom. Mm-hmm. It was all your fault. And that's why I'm going right. to beat you in a wrestling match. And then your dad's going to be in a skybox hanging out with me, mm-hmm. calling me his favorite son. Like that's, he will cut you yeah. as deep as possible. Yeah. Jane Beard says the Tang Man cometh. Oh, good God! Tanger what have we created? after this Tanger. Is, this after is uh, Tanger after Tanger. <laughs> oh, the Tang Man! Listen, I gotta admit, I'm getting a little banged up when I train to get back in the ring. The Tang Man, I'm stealing it. I'm stealing the Tang Man. Yep. I'm just gonna get a remix of his of his theme song, which is just me humming. That same beat. Yep. Can't wait. Mm-hmm. Ricardo says Orange Tang Cassidy. I don't think it works like that. Mm-mm. But I'm going to team with uh, Jimmy Wang Tang. That's for sure. That's right. <laughs> Brian Mahoney says, is it fair to say I don't think MJF, as he is, can stay interesting enough to be champion all year? I feel like the wrestling in AEW, uh, the wrestling AEW is showcasing is severely working against him. Well, this is the beauty of MJF Mm -hmm. because he wrestles so rarely that people forget how incredible of a wrestler Mm -hmm. that he is, Alex. And if I, if I need to remind you, go back and watch that Darby Allen match. 
yeah. because they were in the ring and people went, oh shit. And people are going to see this match mm-hmm. and they're going to go, oh shit. Yeah. Um, MJF also predicted exactly how this title reign would go. Uh, mm-hmm. He said, you know, people are going to say, is he, he's getting boring. Mm-hmm. Like he predicted this. Yeah. No, he, he called a shot immediately upon becoming champion right before he murdered William Regal. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, and I, at the time I was like, well, that's, that's how you book this. And, and yes, people are, people are going to be like, man, this is boring. And, and then he's going to have that match with Danielson. And you're going to go, well, that wasn't boring. Uh, and what you're actually saying, not when you're saying it's boring is you'd rather watch him wrestle more often. Uh, but if you watched him wrestle more often, it would not be as special. He, the the time he takes between wrestling is just enough time for you to forget how good the last match was and then start convincing yourself again that he can't wrestle. And then he wrestles again and you go, damn, that was really great. And the whole thing starts all over again. Honestly, it's kind of a smart thing to do because as well, he's not take as many bumps or anything like that. So what, what, if, if he wrestles, um, you know, uh, uh, if he wrestles Danielson and then he wrestles Tang Man, and then like from, from then on, you know, he's wrestling all these top guys throughout the entire year with with enough the the, the great wrestling that AEW is putting on every week is there to get you between these MJF championship uh, uh title programs with everything else going on between them because you're never going to be uh, I think a lot of it is that that you don't want the the top title program to be the only reason you tune in to watch the weekly stuff, which sometimes it can be in different places. Um, but for this one, you're tuning in to watch stuff like Danielson versus Takeshita uh, and some, some other stuff that I can't remember what they've done, uh, what they, what they promoted for next week um, that you're tuning in to watch that too, while we're still building this uh, top title program. It's great stuff. So backstage, by the way, guys, make sure to super chat and humper chat your Tang references. Mm-hmm. And we'll read them on the air. I got to pull a, pull an Alex on Tuesdays there. <laughs> Give me your Tang puns. Yep. Super chats here on YouTube.com slash Fightful, as well as humper chats at humperchats.com. <laughs> uh, by the way, this week on Fightful, interviews with the former Allen Angels mm-hmm. and uh, Kylin King. So make sure you guys check those out. This weekend on Fightful Select, we will have inside the Royal Rumble mm-hmm. a near final draft on the horrid stuff that went down last year. Yeah. Brian Mahoney says, love you guys, but here's where I disagree. The attraction position has to be given, has to be earned, not given. I think right now MJF is fine. Mid-year, not so sure. I'm unsure as to why you think he won't adapt. Like why mm-hmm. you think that it will stay the same. Like, like that we won't see him descend or, or, or anything like that. In 2019, I really thought what, what Seth Rollins should have done mm-hmm. when Brock Lesnar had that money in the bank, he should have gone psychotic paranoid. That's when he enlists AOP. Like it's mm-hmm. one thing to get to the mountaintop. It's another thing to stay on the mountaintop yep. and people will do crazy things to hold on to their position. Yeah. Look at a guy running WWE right now. Yeah. Yeah. I think there's, there's, for, for example, I don't know, I don't know what, what the, what the, the major um, uh, programs they have looking forward for him might be, but I could see certainly in the fall, something like a MJF versus Keith Lee program. That's an entirely different thing than MJF being like, Brian Danielson, I'm better than you. Well, like, I don't care how good you are, MJF. (laughs) Keith Lee's going to murder you. So let's see what that program is like. I'm just saying, hypothetically, you stick different guys in front of him. Hopefully, he will adapt and run different types of title programs with different types of guys. That's my hope. So Brian Cage is backstage. MJF hands him a wad of money to face Brian Danielson, and Cage is about ready to attack. But Prince Nana says, no, the money, mm-hmm. the money. Because uh, MJF slaps him in the face. Yes, yes. I like, I mean, just like, you, if, what are you feeling right now, big man? That's hate. Yep. I want you King, to use that against Danielson. That's some good stuff. King of the North says that match is going to go crazy. I am so excited to get to watch that because Brian Cage has become one of my favorite performers. He's went from a guy whose work I didn't enjoy mm-hmm. to one of my favorite performers 
because he's he's like the psychology the the pace is also good yep. eloquent says uh they also had a, he also had a great match with willie mack on dark and who does who don't they have good yeah. matches with yeah uh, but that lucha underground callback is great mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. tom lavalley says total 180 for sammy's gimmick love this i completely agree there Jordan Scott says, Guns, Lethal, and Crew, and Yas all on one show, slowly causing madness for me, honestly. Matches are great, but all together, it's a lot. I, I would love to see some of these guys get a week off. Yeah. Some of them, yeah. Yeah. Oh, buddy. Cool Hand, Tangelo Parker. Yeah. That one cool is Hand from Tange. Jam. Yeah, Cool Clan Tange. That's from Jam Beard. Tom LaValle. <laughs> Angelico. <laughs> Tang Helico. <laughs> Tang Helico. <laughs> Ricardo uh. says Tangaloa. <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh, Jesus. I saw Christ. one in the chat that said Papa Tongo. Oh, God. Uh, Jordan Scott says if MJF loses a non title match, he might go mad. Oh, buddy. Yeah. Listen, hear me out. Against Sean Dean. Yeah. Against Sean Dean again. Mm hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Ricardo says, it's time. <laughs> see, see, this is why we have so much fun on Tuesdays. And you poo pooed it until you got to do it yourself. Yeah, it's much better when it's my idea. <laughs> I gotta say, I'm much more receptive to it uh-huh, when uh-huh. it's something that I can personally monetize. Mm-hmm. Meet Norma says, watch Briscoe's Bucks versus, or, or in Hardy's Briscoe's before Dynamite. Feeling very mm. oozy when I saw it was top flight in the Bucks. This was a hoot. Yeah. yeah. Just, I mean, I don't think there is a tag team of this millennium that has had more incredible matches than them. Yeah. Uh, DNC Digital says, feel sad about this one despite being introduced to them last year. A testament to his connection with the people. Thanks to the Fightful team for helping us navigate through this. You should be proud. We're just proud to have good people like you watching us. Like, honestly, uh, and the, the environment that we've cultivated. I know on social media, sometimes you see me get a little bit of sa- a little bit saucy, but mm-hmm. trace the thread. There's always a bad person on the other end of that. And if there's yeah. one thing I like to do, it's to let bad people know that they are not welcome here mm-hmm. on this stream, on yeah. our service, on, on like in our community, yep. because we want a positive embracing situation when things like this go down. And uh, we appreciate all of you. And there were a lot of people that were exposed to him last year. Mm-hmm. And uh, it was a hell of a year to be exposed yes. to. I, I'm going to try here. Konsuke Tankestang. There you go. I did pretty good. You did pretty good. What are we doing here, Eloquent? Tang Tang Tickle Up. <laughs> Some of the, so sometimes the ones that don't actually work are the oh, funniest oh. ones. The fallen tank, oh, Christopher <laughs> Tang Cassidy, not quite orange alternative. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Oh man, <clears throat> Brent Lockwin says I love the Lucha Underground references, but at what what point does he bring up? Yeah, Jeff Cobb used to eat people. That's true. Eventually, eventually. Oh man, Tangderosa says Jam Beard. Man. Uh, Big E, not that Big E, says, watched FTR Briscoes at a friend's house who uh, never had watched wrestling before, and he was amazed. One of my fondest wrestling memories, such tragic news. Sending love to Jay's family, friends, and fans. I showed this off on um, last night's show, but I was there, and I had the most perfect view of the entrance, and this is my favorite picture I've ever taken in wrestling. Oh, man, this... I got chills when I saw this. I got absolute chills because they couldn't build this on AEW TV, really. Nope. There wasn't a lot that they could do. Oh, man. We have the Page and Stokely promo because Big Bill and uh, Lee Moriarty didn't get it done. So now Page is getting it done. Uh-huh. And this amazing Takeshita promo where he starts off and he's like, MJF, he's very mean, then speaks Japanese. <laughs> And Renee goes, what does well, that mean? What does that mean? And he goes, MJF's an asshole. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's true. <laughs> and I just love that. Yeah. It's it's perfect. Very I thought that these were effective uh, talking segments to set things up. Yep. 
Kofi Tangston, mm-hmm. <laughs> says mm-hmm. Tyrone Kid. Oh, we got Tony defeating Willow. Now, again, love this match. I love that they both got their corner spots into the, the yeah. rolling spot and yeah. the sweet cheeks music. Yep. Love it. It's absolutely yeah. killer. I knew it was going to happen after this match yeah. when, when, you know, Soraya and Tony are not keen on, on the originals. Yeah. I knew that we'd have somebody, I don't want to call them out by name, but mm-hmm. they did send a super chat and said that Soraya and Tony heel turn made no sense. Stupid. So this is what I have an issue with when people go, who's the heel. Mm-hmm. We've got two sets of people that don't like each other mm-hmm. and they don't like each other because of tribalism. Right. Well, guess what we see on the World Wide Web every day mm-hmm. talking about AEW and WWE? People who dislike each other for the sole mm-hmm. reason of what they like. And it's right. stupid. It yeah. is dumb. But that's the way that humans react to things, yep. unfortunately. So you have this group of people, Soraya, Tony, that feel like they've been ostracized and, and mm-hmm. kept out and and that they don't fit in. Right. So they are pissy yeah. and they're saying, you know what? Uh, in fact, they say they don't know what we know and they don't know what they don't know right. type of thing. Yeah. I think it makes a lot of sense and I'm okay with this. This mm-hmm. is a choose your own battle. Decide which one you like, decide which one you don't like. Maybe you liked Soraya and Tony more. Maybe you think the AW originals are whiny. Right. Um, what are you thinking? Well, that's all well and good. But uh, they're absolutely going to present the AEW originals as the baby faces here because, of course, they are. Um, and uh, I, I think that there is there's something about um, the way that they're going to probably set up this whole thing. I I personally I love this match. Um, uh, Tony and Soraya um, um, <clears throat> commiserating before the thing. Soraya being really pissy at Hikaru Shida, obviously, who is an original herself. Um, and so they're going to, they're going to, they're drawing these lines, originals versus, uh, the new girls. Um, and, uh, I, I really enjoy the, the tension of Ruby and Willow just became friends, but one of them is undeniably a new girl. And one of them is undeniably homegrown. So w- w- how will that shake out? You know, will we get like a defection, you know, from, from one to the other? Will, will one of the teams have somebody who's actually a mole working for the other team? There's a lot of really cool stuff. That, they're building this to be the women's uh, blood and guts match, which I hope they are. Um, there's a lot of really cool storylines there. And you can, you can, people are penciling in their favorites of who might join which squad. There's a lot of really fun stuff here. Steph, the writer says, who are in your AEW Originals, AEW Outsiders team? Um, Soraya, Tony, I, it, I still say you bring in Mercedes. And Mercedes mm-hmm. still sitting there can. saying, I'm yeah. going everywhere. Yeah, I still say you bring in Mercedes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I want to look at their, their official roster just yes. to. I would, I, would, I would bring in Athena. She's definitely been yes. working that way as well. Um, Athena, oh, Athena would fit in so perfectly well, I, too. I, I, I really man i don't i don't know how like where chris statlander is in her in her rehab process but it Nowhere would be near. a huge a huge shame to do this angle where she's not able to participate yeah maybe she could be like on the outside like helping out like passing things through the bars or something to, to help them out like she should be she should be involved in some way even if she's not cleared to wrestle I would also love to see Ruby Soho get some edge there. Yeah, me too. I would have said Serena, and I am asking every week, guys, by the right. way, what what happened, like what's up with her. But Serena had cut that promo about how shitty WWE was, so it would yeah. make a lot of sense. Mm-hmm. Um, on the AEW side, if you, if you can get Thunder Rosa to work effectively with Jamie and Britt, I think that would be a good, let's put our differences aside. And then if you do... Like the big savior, uh, if mm-hmm. if they're outnumbered, Jade friggin' Cargill, right. man, yeah, Jade freaking Cargill, right? Of there's course. there's there's nobody who's more homegrown, really, than 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 Jade, who's had all of her matches here. 
Um, right. And the idea of, of like, yes, um, I don't like any of you bitches, but I'm fighting for my home because yes. I'm the one who actually runs this place. And so that, so like, I take that, that personally, that would be really good. But there was, they did a thing like it was to a varying degrees of success where they did the, the old black and gold NXT guys versus, um, yeah. versus the new ones. Uh, and they didn't worry about heel face alignments because, because the attachment to black and gold versus the attach versus the new kids yeah. being part of 2.0 the next invading raw and smackdown that's true worked yeah. very well king of the north says people want women's storyline in AEW, but want to act stupid in the meantime don't understand the online grift anymore i agree completely completely with that yeah king of the north says brit jamie sheeta riho and willow yeah I don't know what Riho is doing right now, mm -hmm. but uh, Riho is also, you know, almost forgotten for a lot of what she did. Yeah. Chris Rain says, so excited for Originals versus Outsider. Nyla for the Originals, too. Yes. That is a, a fantastic shout. Yeah. That is a fantastic one. And we give her a little something to do there. And we would get to see her finally play off of other performers, like in a right. positive light, as opposed yeah. to a negative promo. Uh, Tom Lavalley says original for uh, Nyla and splits with Vicky. I think that split already happened. Yeah, I hope so. Eloquent says they need to get Athena on TV more. She's so entertaining on dark. I love her so much as a villain. So for years when people said, who would you send from WWE mm -hmm. to AEW to make a big difference? I said Athena because mm -hmm. that's before they got a lot of people. That's before the mass releases. And I said, well, if you put her on that roster, you've got a, a ring general. You've got a person who's done global TV and she just hasn't been used as much, even though I love that they played off the Jody Threat thing. Don't sure. know how much Jody Threat probably liked it, but uh, they played off of it and made her better than ever. Mike Lima says, here's an idea. Tony, Athena, Soraya, uh, Mercedes versus Britt, Jamie, Ty J versus Sheeta, Willow, Ruby, and Riho. I don't think they'll go three directions mm -hmm. with that. I think that they'll probably, I mean, maybe at the end of it, they'll splinter right. off. Mm -hmm. Maybe. Sawyer says, maybe uh, I was hoping we would get mob boss Sheeta heel turn, but I'm actually going into this outsider story too. Sheeta's exasperated acting is great. She's just really good, man. She conveys her emotions excellently. Right. And there's no reason we can't get this bigger angle. And then a few months down the line after that's over, start building again to the, to the, to the heel she'd have turned. She's not going anywhere. She's, she's going to be a, a very top person in this woman's division for as long as she wants to be. Uh, Jam beard says AWOGs could be Brit, Jamie, Nyla, Sheeta, Riho, outsiders, Soraya, Tony, Athena, Madison, Ruby. Yeah. Madison rain is also another, another good one. Cause I mm -hmm. mean, she is TNA wrestling. Mm -hmm. She absolutely is. Eloquent says, is Turner going to block Mark Briscoe from AEW? Now, that would that would be a thing. Like, if they were like, well, he can't be on there either because he is the brother of a person yeah, who that, said that. That would be ridiculous. Like, there is no reason Mark Briscoe shouldn't be allowed on TV. Yeah. None. Evangelina Gray says, Kurt Tangle. <laughs> Johnny, the Tonky Tang Man. Kurt Tangle is just, that's his actual name, but yes. with the... A harder T at the end of the first name. Kurt I know. Tangle. Uh, <laughs> uh, Ricardo says that. the big orange monster Tang. <laughs> That's Pieces. gotta be. That's gotta be <laughs> Tang. Pieces says Claudio classic Castagnoli. <laughs> Castagnoli. Oh God, Ricardo says Mister Tangerson. <laughs> Tangerson. Tangerson. Drew says Tangle Garcia. Tangle, that's really great. Jesse, Tangman Adam Page, and the sourest Eddie Tangston. Eddie Tangston. Well, Brian Tangelson. There you yeah, go. Brian yeah. Tangelson's a good one. Oh, God. This nut says we finally reveal that T bar stands for Tang Bar. <laughs> 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 uh, oh, Christian Saul. says the tangy chief Roman Tangs. Oh, Jambeard, the death tangle. <laughs> Jordan also says Willow Night Tangale. That's good. Tio says better trademark it now before Chris Tangicho did. Oh, god damn it. He will. 
Luis says Jared Garcia was right there for Jericho Garcia. Yeah, it was. It was. Jared, was it Jared Garcia? Is that what he's trying to say? Like, yeah, I think Jared so. Garcia is perfect. Jerry Garcia, yeah. Jerry Garcia is perfect. Come on. I'll tell you what's also perfect, Alex. Paying one sixth the price for this UFC pay per view that happens <laughs> yep. this weekend. Yeah. yeah. Getting four additional months free off your plan. 30 day money back guarantee. That's what NordVPN.com slash Fightful has for you. Works on all your devices. You got online threat protection. It's the fastest VPN in the world and the VPN that everybody's talking about from the BBC to Huffington Post to BuzzFeed to Wired to Fightful, Entrepreneur, Business Insider, Forbes, all them. Fastest VPN on the planet, threat protection, a global server network, 24-7 support. You are safe from disruptions. You have reliable encryption with NordVPN.com slash Fightful. Works on every device you own, any interface that you own. You can also set it up on your router to protect the whole household. Plus, protect yourself on public Wi-Fi. I'm heading to San Antonio next week. Let me tell you, there's nothing more that I, I feel like I need more than some protection when I'm in San Antonio. Man, that place is wild. That place is wild. You ever hung out on the Riverwalk? It's tame there. But you go to one of those hotels on that unsecured Wi-Fi, might as well be Pirates of the Caribbean. Sail on those, those nasty seas. Not with NordVPN.com slash Fightful. Subscribe now. Four additional months free. You get a great deal. Get a free gift. NordVPN.com slash Fightful. Meet Norma says, Jacket Tang. Shout out to Kushida, the main event humped. Oh boy, did it ever. Darby defeated Kushida. Uh, FightfulSelect.com broke before this that Kevin Knight and the DKC would also be there. Ricardo says, how on earth did Trip screw up Kushida? I want to say this. Before we go there, he did have bigger plans for the Cruiserweight title mm -hmm. in 2021. They were moving... Uh, uh, Roderick Strong from Undisputed Era, mm -hmm. a top act to there. Mm -hmm. Kushida, a worldwide act to yep. there. Mm -hmm. They had recruited Carmelo Hayes. Mm -hmm. They had done a lot of things, and they were going to try to increase the profile of that title. Yep. Unfortunately, what happened happened, and that never got off the ground. Right. Um, CE says, and also, I would say losing Adam Cole didn't help. Losing Kyle O'Reilly didn't help. They lost a lot of their pieces that they were going to need. CE yeah. says, you think there's a possibility of doing Darby versus Sting for the TNT title? If not, who do you think will challenge for the belt at the pay-per-view? Well, Sting says he's not doing singles matches. Mm -hmm. He said that in, in uh, the discussion with Seahawk that I encourage you guys to check out. But um, as far as who it's going to be, um, I think at Revolution they need to put well, – who knows? It might get skipped on Revolution. It might end they up being almost, on Rampage. That's the thing is that like the TNC title hasn't been defended on pay per views very often. Um, at least that's not like I'm, I'm sure it has been, and I'm I'm missing it. Um, but it, not as often as maybe it should have been. Let's just say that. Um, and uh, with this title match that is going, going to be as long as three or even four matches. Um, Danielson and, and MJF, you're going to see even fewer matches. Let's hope my God on, on the card. So, uh, you're going to have even other ones being bumped to the rampage before, uh, to, to a special dynamite leading up to it, that kind of stuff. There's a lot of things you could do. Um, Tim Gordon says, I need Darby to be invested in the super juniors. I don't care how it happens, but it needs to happen. Yeah, it does. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it does. Uh, but this match specifically, Kushida, Darby Allen, let me tell you, they set up, they set this thing up perfectly, mm -hmm. just perfectly. Yep. Um, this spot in in particular, where they talked about the shotgun drop kick mm -hmm. to the outside, and Kushida caught him with an arm bar. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Yep. What'd you um, think of this? Uh I uh yeah, I I I loved it. Um Kushida is is uh like the all the all time blunder of 2.0 to me that era, the just like right right after they did the whole thing like let's let's put him in a in a 
in a tag team based around a type of clothing and then name it something that sounds like masturbation. Jacket time is was the dumbest thing that they could have possibly done with a guy like and I listen. I I, I think that Igman Jiro is a great wrestler and his shtick is really works really well for him. But there's no reason to put Kushida in there with him because Kushida's like a completely different type of wrestler and and a different kind of character and everything. Like he's anyway. I had my own problems with that. I'm so happy to see him back uh, on my TV wrestling like. Like I know Kushida can go, um, and and yeah, man. Like the, the thing about Darby that that makes him a legitimately great wrestler, even if I don't love the guy, is that he is so great at at being in peril. Because when when he had we caught him in that arm bar on the outside, and he was wrenching that shoulder joint. I was like, I. I I don't think you could pull that hard on that little guy. That thing's gonna pop out of its socket. And I also think Darby would be like, "That's cool." I, I kind of called that. So I think, yeah, he's great, man. I I, I thought this match was 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 excellent. Um, and yes, I saw some stuff in the in the chat. It's so true. I can't believe we didn't think about it. Um, Kushida's gonna be in, on Impact tomorrow as well. And check um, out our post Impact show. Yeah. Um, we're. I'm ideally hoping the award show, which starts at eight, will be done by then. Yeah. I don't know, but uh, Joel and Cresta cover that every week. The 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 title uh, program for the TNT title has to be Powerhouse Hobbs, because you want to talk about a clash of styles. You want like, how is Darby Allen going to overcome the odds, and the odds being just one dude, and that's also in the Bay Area where Powerhouse Hobbs is from. Like you gotta do that match. Yeah. That's the that's the guy to go up against Darby Allen. One hundred percent. Powerhouse Hobbs up against Darby Allen. Uh, and you gotta do that at the pape. You gotta do that, you know, at Revolution. That's perfect. So uh we got plenty of uh puns good but king of the north first says the clips they showed of kushida leading up the match uh, of him tapping out hangman in roh was great showed he's a big deal yeah oh yeah that's the thing they've, they've got that footage that they can all refer to mm -hmm. uh if anybody yeah. here wants to see something that kushida is really capable of him and kyle o'reilly best of the super juniors yeah the one that got me laughing during this was the big size tang and the medium sized tang yep. Yeah. The old uh, Scott Hall reference. Yeah. Rob says, human suplex machine, Tang! <laughs> also, shout out to Greg Carter for the medium-sized Tang. Yeah. Ricardo says, Big E Tangston. That's good. Bam Beard, the TNT title match <laughs> would have been five stars in the Tankio Dome. <laughs> Ricardo, <laughs> it's clobbering Tang! <laughs> and Jam Beard says, it's Tang! It's Vader Tang! Yep. A good 38 of those. Pablo says, thanks for the great review. As I find this again. Thanks for the review, SRS and Alex. I agree we're getting Elite, Top Flight, and AR Fox at Revolution. Excited to see how we get there. Soraya and Tony, heel turn is a little rushed, but I like what they're doing. R.I.P. J. Yeah. I'm just sitting here going, where the hell is the House of Black? Again! Mm -hmm. Where the hell are they? I don't know, man. Somebody says I forgot the towel spot. Listen, I'm I'm tanged out right now. Tanged the towel out. spot was good. It was good. It was yeah. very good. Sorry, I yeah. didn't mention that. Yeah. Sawyer says, as much as I like Back to the Future, can't help but to feel Kushida's gimmick is so lame. I almost forget how much he owns in the ring. I mean, gimmick. It's it's an outfit. It's an That's, outfit. It's an, it's an outfit, outfit that he wears to the ring, not wrestles in. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Hunter Tillman says, hey, guys, solid show tonight. Loved seeing all the love and support for Jay Briscoe. Can't wait to see the tribute show. Same here. Can't yes. wait to see what they do. I'm Me sure too. they'll do something special at Supercard of Honor as well. Uh, but I, I, I'm very excited to see that. Yeah. Also, guys, very excited for the Fightful Awards. Thursday, January 19th. Myself, Will Washington, Denise Salcedo. You're going to see some of your favorite wrestlers accepting their awards. We had planned to have more, but obviously some other some other stuff came up here. Mm -hmm. But uh, tune in. Uh, we want to make this a big deal every year because I, I really feel like we have the most educated audience, the most media literate audience of any site out there. And 
it has made me feel very happy to see how many wrestlers are honored by this. There was one person that when I told them what award they won, they told me that they cried. They were so happy. And that wow. meant a lot to me. Uh, I'll be delivering a lot of these awards for to people in WWE and AEW. So very excited about that. That's Alex, nice. tell the people where they can find you. You can find me on the Twitter at Alex Sour Graps. Uh, you can find me on Fightful Select reviewing Raw with uh, with Miss Kate Fabe, Kate Elizabeth, um, and on the regular channel. This one on Tuesdays. Hopefully, we had last week. We had the the news that broke, uh, which actually wasn't a thing, and we were the only ones on the internet who told you, wait. It, this might not be the death knell it thinks it is. We did a four-hour show all about Vince McMahon in Saudi Arabia last 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 week, and last night we had we, we did a tribute show to Jay Briscoe. Hopefully next week we'll have a normal Tuesday where we can do our normal show, which is a bunch of puns and and me doing impressions and stuff. Uh, but also on Fridays I do a watch along of Rampage while reviewing SmackDown on Fightful Select. That should be a lot of fun as well. Check it out, guys! FightfulSelect.com. Jane Beard says, Luis Tanglito, the top mod. Mm -hmm. Big thank you to Luis. We greatly appreciate you. Leave a thumbs up on this video. Next week, Inside the Royal Rumble drops on Fightful. It'll be out this weekend on Fightful Select. Check it out. Uh, John Alba will be here with Alex next week. Yep. Until next time, we're out.